Hello everyone, I'm Chen and uh, I'm an engineer from Intel virtualization team. I also maintained the Colo high availability solution and uh, recently working on eBPF related things. I'm going to talk more broadly about rethinking the QMU and why bringing the power of eBPF to QMU. This page is the agenda. First of all, let's get some background information. The generic eBPF technology. Then we will introduce what and why for the user space eBPF technology. The next session is the key point. We will introduce the design and the implementation of QMU user space eBPF. Because of the KVM forum generally focuses on traditional virtualization field, I would like to briefly cover what is eBPF for those of you who never heard about it or are curious about it. This is essentially your first touch point. This is a public definition of the eBPF. It can run sandboxed programs in a privileged context, such as the operating system kernel. It has a long history from extended Berkeley packet filter in BSD kernel. Port and extended to Linux kernel have been widely used, but uh, which is no longer an axiom for anything. ABPF uh, being able to execute the code in the kernel when some event happens. And a very common one is when system call is happening and then instead of the system call being performed automatically by the kernel, we can execute some code. This is a common example here on how the system call transfer works. It is used to safety and efficiently extend the capabilities of the kernel without requiring to changing kernel source code or load kernel modules. Someone said eBPF is to the kernel what JavaScript is to the browser. Do you remember what the first web page you opened in the web browser and what the current web page shows? It has lots of dynamic effects. Compare the picture from Microsoft website. You can easily know the difference. We went from simple web page showing nice pictures to massive application running in web browser. What enabled this evolution in roughly 20 years? I'm a virtualization developer, so I'm not actually familiar with all of their JavaScript frameworks but it makes sense and it's basically what allows this to happen. Obviously, it is the programmabilities that enable to go from pretty much static websites to application running in web browsers. Why does this matter and why does that matter to kernel and QMU? We will get to that. This page shows a new innovation project based on kernel eBPF. Many projects are already in production. It makes a new way to solve some problems from new areas, including Facebook, Catron, Cilium, and uh, Netflix BCC BPF Trace. Okay, let's into user space eBPF technology field. First of all, we need to answer a fundamental question. Why is having a user space version of eBPF? eBPF is famous for enable user can run code in kernel context. Please rethink about the Linux kernel eBPF. Why we introduce eBPF in kernel? Do we just need a new way to execute code in kernel space? Linux kernel already have system call, netlink, systemfs, or probably a new kernel module to do that. The real reason is the eBPF provides programmability 
extensibility and agilities. So for the programmability view, eBPF is to the QMU what JavaScript is to the browser. This page are more interesting. User space eBPF based project. The first one is OKO, an extension of OpenVSuite TPDK that provides runtime extension with BPF programs, contributed by Orange. The next one is Solana, that's a blockchain related tools, contributed by Solana Foundation. The next one is DBDK EBPF support. I think uh, almost everyone heard the DBDK. It's a set of libraries and uh, drivers for fast packaging processing contributed by Intel. And the last one is DBDK for Windows support. Uh, it's a work in progress project that alone existing eBPF two chains and APIs familiar in the Linux ec ecosystem to be used on the top of Windows, uh, contributed by Microsoft. That means Windows already lack Linux kernel uh, support the eBPF infrastructures. Before we look at a couple of programmability essentials, what does it mean to create a programmable system like JavaScript enable a web browser? First of all, we need some motion of safety. If we alone untrusted the code to run in our web browser, that needs to be isolated. That needs to be sandboxed in some way. It needs to be secure. And the next one, we need uh, continuous delivery. There's no point if we extend our application to require the user to install a new version of our browser. Nobody would ever use any application. It was uh, very confusing to user. We are no longer use this. We will use to pretty much automatically getting update for both website and the browsers on the fly. Probably you don't even notice when you upgrade your Chrome at the point, and you definitely don't notice unless there is some virtual appeal or some virtual changes that the website has changed in the backend. For example, this is all happening continuously and seamless. If you deploy a new version of your application, you will have potentially millions of users on the website at, at the same time. You want to seamlessly upgrade back to the virtualization CSPs may run in thousands of machines at the same time. We can't tell users, please hold your task. We need to reboot the VM to upgrade. Any programmable system needs to have some notion of continuous delivery and seamless upgrade. The last aspect is performance. If we can programmability and uh, we will sacrifice performance. The programmability is probably not worth it. A good example of this is early stage uh, or early years of Java, when there was a huge performance penalty. A lot of that went away later on, but uh, initially. The cost of running Java with a different running a C application was huge. Fortunately, Cumul Eurospace eBPF support have JET compiler to make code native execution. Just in time compiler, where some notion of generic bad code is being translated into what the CPU that your machine is running actually understands. So we are getting to as close as possible to native executive speed.
let's go to the key point QMU user space eBPF. In addition to the general problems mentioned earlier, let's go into QMU development process. What do you do if you want to change any aspect of that? What option do you have if the QMU does not provide what you need? You probably much have two options. You can do upstream implementation or write a downstream or local code maintained by yourself. And uh, we will look at both. Upstream support means changing QMU source code. It means going upstream to the QMU development mailing list and uh, convincing the world that this change is really needed and uh, whatever complexity you are adding, the rest of the world should be paying. It means exposing some sort of configuration API to actually expose that and to actually enable it. And uh, then you have to wait years of time until all your users actually upgrade to the latest QMU version. This is nice way, but years of time have passed. The own world will basically have these capabilities. The problem with that, we don't really have time for that. Nobody wants to wait their years. The second aspect is uh, downstream, which is a local implementation that you can update it to your own QMU at downtime that will extend the functionality, which means if you apply an internal patch, it will break with probably every single QMU release update or need to take effort fully maintained internal version of QMU. User space eBPF for QMU have three advantages. Flexibility, ability to extend certain type of functionalities without limit of export API, and uh, agility, admin can generate uh, custom solution without the delay, even no need to reboot the VM. And uh, the last one is performance, native execution. Yeah, that's from Jet compiler. Let's introduce the QMU user space eBPF design components. UBPF project is the key point of our design. It in includes an eBPF assembler, disassembler, interpreter, and Jet compiler used by Windows eBPF support and other projects maintained by iOWiser and uh, we will as a shared library loaded by QMU. The next one is the Preval project. This is a user space ABPF verifier uh, and contributed by Microsoft. But maybe QMU eBPF just need parts of it. I will make it as an optional below because if someone already has admin permission on the host, he has many ways to bypass it. We will go into the kernel eBPF, not a deep dive, but a super quick introduction to kernel. How does the Linux kernel eBPF look like? Roughly, there are two pieces. We have a user space, uh, and the uh, kernel people like to put that on top. Then below that, there's a Linux kernel, the operating system. How do we define the actual program? There are many ways to doing that. The one we used the most is to write it in a higher level. From a BPF perspective, high level language. So just the C code and then use clone uh, with the BPF back 
in target to generate bytecode. You can write the program similar to one of the example we have seen earlier. Run clone and uh, what you will get the generic uh, BPF bytecode and you will have your controller program which will open that generate uh, bytecode file and uh, will load it into the Linux kernel using the system call. The verifier will actually verify it and the JET compiler will compile this into your native CPU and then attach it to the system call or to the hook that you define. Uh, we show this picture just uh, need to compare with our QMU EPF arc. Let's compare with uh, QMU Eurospace EPF arc. We implement all the EPF execution contacts in QMU field. It can reuse some developer tools with kernel EPF like LVM clone and uh, naturally gain new features from LLVM such as P4 language to eBPF bytecode support. From a user perspective or from a developer perspective, we can use Clown to inject arbitrary program at hook points on the actual runtime. So what will run on the system? Obviously, you don't need to run clone on the system where you actually load the program and uh, where you attach it. For example, run clone on your laptop and uh, generate the bytecode, ship the bytecode and load to the target hypervisor. What QMU user space eBPF can do? From a principal and uh, technical point of view, packet filtering, tracing, classification and static collection. This is original BPF did. We can do it better. And uh, new additions can evolve at a rapid pace, much quicker than normal QMU development, especially for zero-day issues. And enabled uh, QMU hot patching we always dreamed about. This needs developer many hoax points in the future and uh, enable P4 program language to QMU network filter. Uh, and the eBPF already have 100% modular and uh, composable, inspire new innovation based on eBPF. We will into detailed QMU user space eBPF development. The current development is still in a very initial stage. It can be divided into three related parts. Introduce UBPF project to QMU. It means we need integrated UBPF project to QMU. The original idea is to make UBPF as a submodule to QMU. But uh, got community comments, we need a wide this way for complex compare related issue. So I load it as a shared library currently. And uh, the next one is at uh, UPF infrastructure and helpers, mainly in QMU UBPF UPF.C. It provides a basic operation interface like load eBPF bytecode, running it in eBPF sandbox, exactly. And the last one is uh, add the first effect module, start from introduce eBPF based module, hox, eBPF filter for network packet filtering and tracing. This is the uh, architecture about uh, how the QMU UBPF filter works. QMU net filter framework already finished before. We just create a new filter module 
eBPF filter. It can load user defined eBPF program to decide the real function in network data path. And it supports multi module on the same one data path. It can attach on VM's NAT device to handle all the guest RX TX packet and cannot support vhost. And uh, this is user space eBPF filter benefits. Uh, make admin have ability to create any local policy for each VM to filter corresponding package according to business workload. For example, do DDoS mitigation or package feature recognition filtering. Let's show a demo uh, and uh, write your own ABPF program and uh, load it to QMU user space uh, uh, ABPF filter and uh, make VM handle it at runtime. Uh, we can see the ABPF C code uh, that's uh, defined the IPv4 headers and just uh, our target is uh, uh, destination IP 1.1.1.1. Uh, current uh, ABPF filter support match any of field of packet depend on your own eBPF program. And uh, next, uh, we need to use uh, LLVM uh, clone to compare uh, this eBPF C code to the beta code. Uh, this step is the same with kernel eBPF and uh, load it to QMU UBPF filter by QMP commands, HMP commands. No need to reboot the VM, the new policy will take effect at the wrong time. This page shows our current stage. Uh, we already submit the RFC version to community including load EBPF as a shared library and uh, uh, the first effective module network EBPF filter. The initial version focuses on programmabilities, no probable EBPF verify support. We will discuss it in the uh, community later. Let's talk about the future of QMU user space eBPF. So first of all, we will collect uh, community comments for the initial RFC version and uh, make it uh, merged to QMU. And the next one is add more helpers to add more functions for eBPF code. And uh, also need to add more hoax points for hotfix and other feature. Uh, the next one is EBPF map support. That's all. Thank you.